Hi everyone, happy Tuesday. I hope you all enjoyed your Easter break and had a nice relaxing weekend, enjoying time with your families. Today I have another activity that goes along with our enrichment packet. Our objective for today is how do I compare and contrast two books accurately? So the first thing I want to talk about is the words compare and contrast. We might have heard this before when we did our mentor sentences, when we, com we would compare and contrast two sentences. So compare means to show how two things are the same, and contrast means to show how two or more things are different. So over here we have called a Venn diagram. And again, this should look familiar because we've done this on day two of our mentor sentences where we would use this to compare two sentences. So instead of comparing and contrasting two sentences, we're going to compare and contrast two books today. And these books should be familiar to you. I picked two familiar books for you guys because I want you to easily, when I read, I want you to remember easily what we had read and it's a repeated read. So it'll be a little bit better for you again to remember and hopefully you'll be able to fill out this Venn diagram with no problems at all. So we are going to compare and contrast Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock and Anansi goes fishing. I'll explain the Venn diagram after we're done reading both books. This video is going to be a little bit longer again because I'm going to be reading two books to you in the same video. As always, we're going to do our vocabulary. <clears throat> so the first one is for our Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock. Before I get started, as always, I want to review, remember when we did, this is a title. If you remember all the words that we type, that we capitalize in a title, we capitalize all nouns, verbs, adjectives, and our pronouns. Pronouns replace nouns. Those tinier words like and, the, it, or all those don't get capitalized unless it's the very first word in the title. <clears throat> so our first word we have is wicked. And if you remember the motion for this word, it was this. Excellent. And wicked means evil. And this word is an adjective. It's used to describe someone. And this could also be, wicked could also be a kind of character trait as well. So when Miss Cannon comes across the word wicked, I want you to do our motion for that. Awesome. Our next one we have is yams. First thing I want to point out is we have our suffix s, my favorite one. S means plural, like cats, more than one cat. Meow. Awesome. So we have more than one yam. And we talked about this. A yam is just another word for a sweet potato. So our motion for this, if you remember, was we pointed down to the ground because potatoes come from underground. And then we took a bite. And then we made an O for orange because sweet potatoes are like an orange color. Okay, so we point to the ground and then O for orange. Awesome. And then our last one for Nancy and the Moss Covered rock, rock is stamped. And that's just another word for stomped. And we un, I'm sitting in crisscross right now, if you can't see. And we uncross and we, we stamped two times with our feet. One, two, and then crisscross. So when I read stamped, uncross, one, two, crisscross. Perfect. Again, if you notice, it has our suffix ed. 
PD is in the past like laugh. To laugh in the past. Excellent. So I'm going to start reading Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock. Then I'll go over our vocabulary for Anansi Goes Fishing just so it's fresh in your mind. <clears throat> so we have Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock. So this is retold. Our author is Eric Kimmel, and it's illustrated by Janet Stevens. And our publisher is The Holiday House. So here we go. I love this story. Bella is behind me, roaming around, smelling things. Once upon a time, Anansi the spider was walking, walking, walking through the forest when someone, something caught his eye. It was a strange moss-covered rock. How interesting, Anansi said. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Do you remember what happened? Kapam! Everything went black. Down fell Anansi, senseless. An hour later, Anansi woke up. His head was spinning. He wondered what had happened. I was walking along the path when something caught my eye. I stopped and said, isn't this a strange moss covered rock? Kapam! Down fell Anansi again. But this time, when he woke up an hour later, he knew what was happening. Aha, said Anansi. This is a magic rock. And whenever anyone comes along and says the magic words, isn't this a strange, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, down he goes. This is good to know, said Anansi, and I know just how to use it. Fix my headband real quick. Oh, he is tricky icky. So, Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest until he came to Lion's house. Lion was sitting on his porch. At his feet was a great pile of yams. Anansi loved yams. But he was much too lazy to dig them up himself. Anansi said to Lion, hello, Lion. It is very hot today, don't you think so? Yes, Anansi, said Lion. It is terribly hot. I am going for a walk in the cool forest, said Anansi. Would you like to come? I certainly would, said Lion. And here's a picture of yams. So Lion and Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest. After a while, Anansi led Lion to a certain place. Lion, do you see what I see? Oh, yes, Anansi, said Lion. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapam! Down fell Lion. Anansi ran back to Lion's house and made off with Lion's yams. When it says made off with Lion's yams, that means he stole. An hour later, Lion woke up. His head was spinning. Anansi was nowhere in sight. And when he got home, he found that every single one of his yams was gone. Lion was very sad. But Anansi was very happy. He couldn't wait to play his trick again. Once more, Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest. This time, he stopped at Elephant's house. Elephant was sitting on his porch. At Elephant's feet was a great pile of bananas. Anansi loved bananas, but he was too lazy to pick them himself. So, he said to Elephant, Hello, Elephant. Isn't it hot today? It is, Elephant agreed. I am going for a walk in the cool forest, Anansi said. Would you like to come? That sounds nice, said Elephant. Thank you for inviting me, Anansi. I 
think some of us can already predict where Anansi is taking elephant. So Anansi and elephant went walking, walking, walking through the forest. After a while, Anansi led elephant to a certain place. Elephant, look, do you see what I see? Elephant looked. Yes, I do, Anansi. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapam! Down fell Elephant. Anansi ran back to Elephant's house and made off with all the bananas. Now, I don't want to give anything away, but if you remember, there is a certain someone watching. That's a key character here, too. An hour later, Elephant woke up. His head was spinning. Anansi was nowhere in sight. And when he got home, he found that every single one of his bananas was gone. Elephant was very sad. Now you can think, too. Since we've already learned about character traits describing someone on the inside, you can start to think of a character trait for Anansi here. But Anansi was very happy. He couldn't wait to play his trick again. He played it on rhinoceros and hippopotamus. He played it on giraffe and zebra. He played it on every single animal in the forest. But all this time watching from behind the leaves was Little Bush Deer. Little Bush Deer is small and shy and very hard to see. She watched Anansi play his wicked trick again and again on all the other animals. Little Bush Deer decided it was time for Anansi to learn his lesson. So, Little Bush Deer went deep into the forest to where the coconut trees grow. She climbed a coconut tree and threw down a great many coconuts. She carried the coconuts home in a basket and set them on her porch. Then she sat down beside them to wait. I wonder who she's waiting for. In a little while, along came Anansi. <clears throat> Anansi's eyes lit up when he saw Little Bush Deer's coconuts. Anansi loved coconuts. He loved to eat the tender white coconut meat and drink the sweet coconut milk. But he was much too lazy to gather coconuts himself. Instead, he said, hello, Little Bush Deer. It is so hot today. Little Bush Deer smiled. It is very hot, Anansi. I'm going for a walk in the cool forest. Would you like to come? Yes, I would, said Little Bush Deer. Little does Anansi know what her plan is. So Anansi and Little Bush Deer went walking, walking, walking in the cool forest. After a while, Anansi led Little Bush Deer to a certain place. Little Bush Deer, look over there. Do you see what I see? Little Bush Deer knew all about Anansi's trick. She looked. No, Anansi, I don't see anything. You must see it. Look carefully. Little Bush Deer looked. No, I still don't see anything, she said. Anansi began to get angry. You must see it. Look over here. Look right where I'm pointing. Do you see it now? No, Anansi, said Little Bush Deer. Anansi stamped one, two, crisscross his legs. You see it. You just don't want to say it. Say what? Said Little Bush Deer. You know. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Said Little Bush Deer. Yes, said Anansi. All right, then I will say it to make you happy. You know, said Little Bush Deer. There, I said it. Are you satisfied? <laughs> Little Bush Deer thought she was supposed to say, you know. No, Anansi shouted. You're not supposed to say, you know. 
What am I supposed to say? You're supposed to say, isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapam! Down, fell in Nancy. <laughs> oh, she got him. Little Bush Deer ran and got all the other animals. Together they went to Anansi's house and took back all the good things he had stolen from them. An hour later, Anansi woke up. His head was spinning. Little Bush Deer was nowhere in sight, and when he got home, he found his house as empty as it was before. But if you think Anansi learned his lesson, you're mistaken because he's still playing tricks to this very day. Love that story. And when you're going to do your Venn diagram, your compare and contrast, I want you to think about some of the things that you could compare <clears throat> and contrast with these stories. Think about the characters that were the same or different, the setting, the central message or theme, which I have here, the lesson the author is trying to teach you, the problem and different traits that characters that, ha that ha have that were the same or different. <clears throat> I'll go over the examples of the central message when I'm done reading our second story. I really did love that story. Boy, oh boy, Nancy thought he had everyone tricked except for the little bush deer. All right, our second story has again a Nancy in it, <clears throat> and it's called A Nancy Goes Fishing. So, first, let's go over our vocabulary. Again, I have a Nancy capitalized because a Nancy is a noun, a proper noun. Goes, the G in goes because it's a verb, <clears throat> and fishing as well. Our first one we have is weave, okay? When you weave, it's to form something by using thread or you could use yarn. This was our motion for weave. That's a key word in our story because they are learning how to weave a fishing net. And to weave is a verb because you're doing it. It's an action word. Our next one is quarrel, okay? A quarrel is just another word for an argument or like a fight using words. And our motion for quarrel, we used um, words in this. I'm angry at you. So that was our motion. I'm angry at you for a quarrel because they're in an argument. And our last one is net maker. And if you first notice, we have our suffix er. Er means a person who or more, like teacher. A person who teaches faster, more fast. Now in this sense, a net maker is a person who makes a net. Okay, that's what a net maker is. So our motion for that was a person who, and we're going to use the weave and then throw a net, okay? Almost like you're using it to fish, just like they do in the story, okay? So if you follow along with Miss Kanderin um, doing those motions, that would be fantastic. So again, as I'm reading Anansi Goes Fishing, I also want you in the back of your mind to think about Anansi and the moss covered rock and things that would be the same and things that would be different between these two stories. So again, our author is Eric Kimmel, illustrated by Janet Stevens, and our illustrators are Holiday House, again, or excuse me, our publishers. Here we go. This is another story where Anansi thinks he's smarter than others, but it doesn't go as planned. One fine afternoon, Anansi the spider was walking by the river when he saw his friend Turtle coming toward him carrying a large fish. Anansi loved to eat fish, though he was much too lazy to catch them himself. Where did you get that fish? He asked Turtle. 
again, we see that Nancy is much too lazy to do anything. I caught it today when I went fishing, Turtle replied. I want to learn to catch fish too, Anansi said. Will you teach me? Certainly, said Turtle. Meet me by the river tomorrow. We will go fishing together. Two can do twice the work of one. But Anansi did not intend to do any work at all. Turtle is slow and stupid, he said to himself. I will trick him into doing all the work. Then I will take the fish for myself. But Turtle was not as stupid as Anansi thought. So Anansi's plan right now is to make Turtle do all the work. He will get to eat the fish. We'll see if that happens. Early the next morning, Turtle arrived. Are you ready to get started, Anansi? He asked. Yes, Anansi said. I have been waiting a long time. I want to learn to catch fish as well as you do. First, we make a net, said Turtle. Net making is hard work. When I do it myself, I work and get tired. But since there are two of us, we can share the task. One of us can work while the other gets tired. I don't want to get tired, Anansi said. I'll make the net. You can get tired. All right, said Turtle. He showed Anansi how to weave a net. Then he lay down by the riverbank. Your brain should already be starting to think, hmm, how can one work? and the other just get tired. Hmm. This is hard work, Nancy said. I know, said Turtle, yawning. I'm getting very tired. And Nancy worked all day weaving the net. The harder he worked, the more tired, tired Turtle grew. Turtle yawned and stretched. And finally, he went to sleep. After many hours, the net was done. Wake up, Turtle, Anansi said. The net is finished. Turtle rubbed his eyes. This net is strong and light. You are a fine net maker. A person who makes nets. I know you worked hard because I am very tired. I'm so tired, I have to go home and sleep. Meet me here tomorrow. We will catch fish then. Hmm. Anansi worked all day, but Turtle got tired? Hmm. The next morning, Turtle met Anansi by the river again. Today, we are going to set the net in the river, Turtle said. Look, he's got his cooler and his umbrella. Doesn't look like he's ready to do any work. That is hard work. Yesterday, you worked while I got tired. So today, I'll work while you get tired. No, no, said Anansi. I would rather work than get tired. All right, said Turtle. So while Anansi worked hard all day setting the net in the river, Turtle lay on the riverbank, getting so tired, he finally fell asleep. Wake up, Turtle, Anansi said hours later. The net is set. I'm ready to start catching fish. <sighs> Turtle yawned. I'm too tired to do any more today, Anansi. Meet me here tomorrow morning. We'll catch fish then. Now here, you can think of a trait for Anansi, but you can also think of a character trait for Turtle as well, based on the things that he's doing and saying in a story. Turtle met Anansi on the riverbank the next morning. Look at him. I can hardly wait to catch fish, Anansi said. That's good, Turtle replied. 
Catching fish is hard work. You worked hard these past two days, Anansi. I think I should work today and let you get tired. Oh, no, said Anansi. I want to catch fish. I don't want to get tired. All right, said Turtle. Whatever you wish. Anansi worked hard all day pulling the net out of the river while Turtle lay back, getting very, very tired. How pleased Anansi was to find a large fish caught in the net. What do we do now, he asked Turtle. Turtle yawned. Now we cook the fish. Cooking is hard work. I think I should cook while you get tired. No, cried Anansi. He did not want to share any bit of the fish. I will cook. You get tired. While Turtle watched, Anansi built a fire and cooked the fish from head to tail. That smells delicious, Turtle said. You are a good cook, Anansi. And you worked hard. I know, because I am very tired. Now it is time to eat the fish. When I eat by myself, I eat and get full. Since there are two of us, we should share the task. One of us should eat while the other gets full. Which do you want to do? I want to get full, Anansi said, thinking only of his stomach. Hmm. One person eats while the other gets full. Hmm. I want you to think, how do you get full if you're not eating anything? Then I will eat. Turtle began to eat while Anansi lay back and waited for his stomach to get full. Are you full yet? Turtle asked Anansi. Not yet. Keep eating. Turtle ate some more. Are you full yet? Nope. Keep eating. Turtle ate some more. Are you full yet? Not at all, said Anansi. I'm as empty as when you started. That's too bad, Turtle told him, because I'm full and all the fish is gone. What? Anansi cried. It was true. Turtle had eaten the whole fish. You cheated me, Anansi yelled when he realized what had happened. I did not, Turtle replied. You did. You made me do all the work, then you ate the fish yourself. You won't get away with this. I am going to the justice tree. Anansi ran to the justice tree. Warthog sat beneath its branches. Warthog was a fair and honest judge. All the animals brought their quarrels. I'm angry at you. To him. What do you want, Anansi? Warthog asked. I want justice, Anansi said. Like fairness. Turtle cheated me. He went fishing together. We went fishing together. He tricked me into doing all the work. Then he ate the fish himself. Turtle deserves to be punished. Warthog knew how lazy Anansi was. He couldn't imagine him working hard at anything. Did you really do all the work, he asked. Yes, Anansi replied. Well, what did you do? I wove the net. Now, wove is past tense of weave. I set it in the river. I caught the fish, and I cooked it. That is a lot of work. You must have gotten very tired. No, said Anansi, I didn't get tired at all. Turtle got tired, not me. Warthog frowned. Turtle got tired? What did he do? Nothing. If he did nothing, why did he get tired? Anansi, I don't believe you. No one gets tired by doing nothing. If Turtle got tired, then he must have done all the work. You are not telling the truth. Go home now and stop making trouble. Warthog had spoken. There was nothing more to be said. Anansi went home in disgrace, and it was a long time before he spoke to Turtle again. But some good came out of it. Anansi learned how to weave nets and how to use them to catch food. 
He taught his friends how to do it, and they taught their friends. Soon, spiders all over the world were weaving. To this day, wherever you find spiders, you will find their nets. They are called spider webs. Now, remember sometimes I said these trickster tales can also tell us how some things came to be or how people think. So this story kind of tells us how spiders learn how to weave their nets. So as you can see in that story, Anansi was planning on tricking Turtle, but Turtle ended up tricking him. There's no way that Turtle, again, could have gotten tired when he wasn't doing any of the work, right? Anansi was doing all the work. And there's no way that Turtle or Anansi could have gotten full if he wasn't eating, right? Turtle really played a large trick on him. And if you did notice, if you didn't notice before when we read in the beginning of the year, our friend Little Bush Deer was watching in this story too. Now he wasn't involved in the story, but he was just watching. So let's take a look at our Venn diagram here. And this is how you're going to set yours up. Okay, I have our two circles. And at the top here I have a Nancy in the moss covered rock. And then here I have a Nancy goes fishing. Now if you remember on the outsides are things that are different. And in the center is how they are the same. So I started off by comparing and contrasting some of the characters. So in a Nazi in the moss covered rock, there was the character Elephant. Elephant was not in the story, a Nazi goes fishing. So I put Elephant on that side. And then Turtle was in a Nazi goes fishing, but not in a Nazi in the moss covered rock. So those two characters were different. And then in the same between the two stories, we have the character Anansi. Obviously, both Anansi was in Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock and Anansi goes fishing. So there you can also make a great text-to-text -text connection between these two stories as well, beginning with the characters. So again, when you're doing this, some of the things that you can compare and contrast are characters. So there are also different characters that were in the story. The setting, where did these stories take place? Did they happen in the same place or different? The central message theme, which I'll go over in a minute. The problem of the stories or some of the traits that the characters had. So central message theme we did in the beginning of the year was the lesson the author is trying to teach you. So here are some examples of what the central message could be of either of these stories. You never know who's watching. Be careful what you wish for. Playing tricks can affect others. Taking the easy way out isn't always the answer. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Honesty is the best policy, which means you should always tell the truth. Cleverness can help you achieve things. And then the last one I added, we didn't have on our chart, but I added because I thought you might be able to use it for these stories. What goes around comes back around, or what goes around comes around. That simply means that if someone plays a trick, or if someone does something not nice to someone, it could always come back to them, and someone might not do something very nice to them back. Kind of like um, teaching them a lesson to treat people the way you want to be treated. So I want you to think about that central message as well. So for your activity for this, and if you were following along with me the whole time, awesome job. I know this was a little bit longer of a video because I read two different stories. <clears throat> You're going to make your Venn diagram. It can just be on a piece of paper. If you want to use different colors like Miss Candoran did, go ahead. And I want you to find... Um, I want you to try to fill up the circles with things that are different and things that are the same. I would say try to find at least four things that are different and four things that are the same. So four or more things, I would say, would probably fill up these circles. 
So thank you for following along with me. I can't wait to hear your responses. Again, these are this activity you don't have to do, but I would love to see what you do with it to be creative and just keep your brains going at home. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.